Now let's add a bit of control. Right, the control is going to be pretty similar to what we did with breakout. Right, so the left uh, arrow key is going to move the player to the left. The right arrow key is going to move the player to the right. Now, of course, if if for example, if you if you're making a mobile game, then then we'll, we'll use touch control, but uh, we won't be covering that right now. So for now, we're just going to use left and right. Let me just find my object in the scene. Great. Okay, so let's see. Player, playmaker. Oh, uh, so apparently I've already done this, but let me just uh, restart this again so you can uh, you can see how that's done. Actually, I, hmm, I think that was a glitch. Uh, anyways, playmaker and then add restate machine. And then we'll say this is control. And then what do we do here? We want to get access. So this is, uh, if you're not familiar with this, um, you can go back to the third um, third week. We have a video on creating controls. So I just added a variable for the horizontal variable, the x axis. Um, I don't think I added that. Okay, let's add this. We want to get the axis, the horizontal axis, and put it in this variable. Multiplier, let's say 10. We know that that's going to determine the speed of when you control the character. And then we'll do a translate. All right, so get axis and then translate on the x axis. Right, so let's hit play. And it's, uh, I can control it, very good. I just saved it. Now, in this game, when you move the character, let's say, okay, when I move the character all the way to the left, I want it to show up on the other side. Right, so that's, that's kind of how a lot of these games uh, behaves. And, and let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to just, uh, create a trigger first on the either side of both sides of the screen. Okay, so let's see. Cube. Wall. Gonna make it a little bit bigger. Right. Something like that. Make that a trigger because I don't need it to uh, collide with anything. And eventually we're gonna turn off the mesh render, which basically turns off uh, the render so you can't see it in the game. I mean, you can still see the collider in the editor, but we will probably turn that off later. But um, Let's create that, save it, and uh, let's see, we are going to do something here. Let's create an idle state for the, for the wall. All right, so when the game starts, I don't want it to do anything. Actually, that's, um, let's not do this on the wall. Let's, sorry about that. Let's remove, remove that component. I should do this on the player. All right. So this basically says, the control says, you know, when when you are pressing these left and right keys, we move the you know, we move the object. Um, that's add another state machine here, just because I want to, I kind of want to separate those two different functions, right? So we have the, the, the state machine we just created. Let's call this control, right? And uh, I want to add one more state machine. So I can do it from here or I can just add another com playmaker component here as well. Right, so the first one is control, it's which, is, which manages user input. The second one, it's not so much about user control, it's more about 
where the game is going to place you when you hit the wall. So I'm going to say, uh, let's just call this wall trigger. I might change my mind, my mind later, but let's, let's do that for now. I'm just going to close these to make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so wall trigger. So I don't really care. I don't want this state machine to, to, to do anything when the game starts, but when the player collides or when the, the player touches the uh, the wall, I wanted to, to do something, right? So let's add a trigger, enter. Now I'm using trigger instead of collisions because the wall is now a trigger instead of a collider. A collider is something that you uh, let me just quickly show you the difference now. Okay, now this is a collider. I'm going to play the game. You can see that the player is colliding with it because the player has a physics physics component and then the, the, the collider sort of acts as a solid object. But when it's a trigger, let's play the game again. The object will just go through the player object would just go through this queue because it's it's simply a trigger. It doesn't uh, interact with physics. Right? It's just a trigger for you to trigger events. Right? So so let's see. Oh, my Unity is uh, somehow the interface changed. Let me restart and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so I've uh, restarted my Unity app. Um, I don't know why it's, it's, it's doing that. Um, it's been doing that quite frequently lately. I'm not sure what the problem is. Uh, but anyhow, so we have the trigger enter. And when, whenever there's something that enters this, uh, the player, we want it to do something, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to check uh, what, um, what trigger it, it, it is. So we, we're going to tag the walls. Again, this is covered in week three, so if you are not familiar with some of these concepts, uh, make sure you go back and review it. Right. Call this. This is the wall. If I'm just going to create a yes and no event, just for um, simplicity's sake, right? So if it's wall, we go to yes. Otherwise, we just go to no, right? So actually, I don't need the no event. If not, then we'll just finish and then go back to. Trigger, enter. Go back to idle state, sorry. Um, okay, so so what happens when, when we hit the wall? Well, let's that's, that's just see if uh, it detects it first. Let's play. Goes to the wall. It's not detecting it. Let me just try that again. Right, I think I made a mistake of doing the trigger event here instead of here. So the trigger event should be, I should probably use the, yeah, I should have used the trigger event up here instead of trigger enter. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And uh, remove trigger enter. Um, I'm going to delete this. And uh, have the yes event here. Okay. So what I've essentially done is instead of using a trigger enter transition, which uh, is triggered whenever well, it's triggered whenever a trigger event happens, so, so it doesn't actually check the tag, um, and uh, instead of doing that, we should be using the trigger event, which detects when a trigger enters, 
what the object uh, what the other object is right. so so and then that that's when we're gonna send the yes event to this state so it's always good to to, to test your game while you're doing development because you know you can get confused sometimes and forget things occasionally um, so so that that's always a good uh, habit just step by step before you finish the whole thing test your states make sure it's working before you go on to the next one okay so the, the, the next one is going to be the interesting interesting state right so we want to teleport we want to teleport the player object from this um, position on the X to over here right so let's see if we can do that easily So if we simply change the x value, I wonder if that will work. So let's go to, um, well, first of all, we need the variable, right, to control the x position. And we also need a original, sorry, I should add a new variable, original x position. I'm going to change this to new exposition. Right. So when the event happens, right, when when the trigger event happens, I want to get the exposition of the player. And what I want to do is I want to just flip it so it goes to the other side. Um, and uh, that would work because the um, the middle part of the screen is at uh, zero position, right? So, so this line here, this is zero. So if I just switch the sign of the float number, then we should be able to do that. To do that teleportation fairly quickly. Right? So, so that's that's if that works. Get position, original position, and we want it to be world space. It's fine, and then. Float, uh, float, multiply, and then we're just gonna do. Actually, let's let's use a, a different one. Let's use float operator. So a float operator gives you a bit more control over how you. Uh, Manipulate these float numbers, right? So we're going to do original position times negative one, and then store that at as the new position, and then finally we're going to set position. Or we're going to set the x position to the new position. Now you could have just used one position here instead of having two, um, but just for clarity's sake, we're going to use two. And once that's done, let's finish and go back to the idle state. See if that works. Right, so it seems like it's working. Now, of course, if you uh, pay attention, then you'll see that as soon as the object touches the wall here, it, c it comes over here, not at the edge of the screen, which is not great for creating that illusion that you're coming over this side and then coming in from outside of that screen so what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna positions position the wall a bit outside of of the of the screen space so you can't actually see it right see now it feels a bit more natural right great okay so, so I think that works I'm gonna save the game and uh, I'm going to simply duplicate the wall. Right. And I'm just going to change the X to the other side. Right. Again, just uh, simple manipulation there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, let's go to the next video.